So um, let's start formally. Um, as always, bienvenidos a todos, ¿verdad? A Hipótesis Podcast. Creo que esto es el episodio 15, ¿verdad? Eh, estamos siguiendo con la serie de los CrossFit Games, donde estamos entrevistando atletas de los CrossFit Games. En el día de hoy tenemos a Mayra Brand con nosotros, which is the first athlete uh, of the ones that I have interviewed that have, have, have gone to different games, to multiple games, which is so great. I think that other than Josue, which which made it second place again this year on um, Upper Extremity Adaptive, you are po possibly the most successful athlete like on the games from Puerto Rico. So congrats on that. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, let's start. Um, when you were really, really young, you moved from Puerto Rico, right, to the States. Yeah, um, I was just a baby, um, okay. so we moved from uh, Puerto Rico to, I live in South Florida, um, but we moved to, yeah, we moved to Florida when I was really, really young. Cool. And how was that? I mean, like, Puerto, Rico, Puerto Ricans are probably the, the, the only race in the world that it doesn't matter, like, where you are on the planet or where, where you work. Where were you raised? If your grandparents or great grandparents are Puerto Ricans, your your body white doesn't matter. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, you know, I knew it from very early on, and you know, um, I love it and embrace it, and uh, um, you know, I'm proud. <laughs> so glad. So, you were in the states. Um, what's your background? Because obviously you're a gymnast. Mm -hmm. We can tell, but yeah. other than that. Yeah, no, pretty much uh, from probably about five or six years old, um, I did gymnastics and um, I quit when I was about 14 or 15. I randomly played soccer for like two years in high school just because my sister did it. And my my friend at the time, you know, I just tried that tried out with her on the team yeah. and then um, quickly realized that I don't like running. <laughs> and and um, Then I found like cheerleading and competitive cheerleading, which was nice. a little bit more like gymnastics. So I've kind of done that ever since. Yeah, it was like your wheelhouse, right? Right on your wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. How was it like growing up being a gymnast? Because you're tall, like you're a big athlete, like in terms of what a gymnast should be. So how was that like transition? Like, was it from on your teenagers? When you were a teenager that you suddenly grow up and it was like, oops, maybe this is not my sport. Was it the way? Like, how was it? Yeah, that I mean, I was pretty tall. Um, yeah, I was pretty tall for gymnastics pretty early. So, um, I mean, even just being, you know, maybe in middle school already five foot three, five foot four. Is yeah, like, you're big. You're like big. A, you're big. You know, a monster next. Yeah. You're a bit. Um, but I held my own for a while, you know, and then honestly, it was more so um, just the environment that I was in just as I got older, it just wasn't, um, uh, I don't know, healthy, I think. So I started to kind of realize that. And then once you get into like competitive cheerleading, it like it's they need strong girls, you know, yeah. it's good to be strong. And the fact that I tumble a lot um, just kind of made it super um you know, kind of more, uh, more my and, style, I guess. Yeah. So you, you enjoy definitely possibly more being a cheerleader than, than a gymnast at that point. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, yeah, I definitely like the, um, like the tumbling and athletic part of cheerleading a mm -hmm. little bit more than just like on the sidelines, you know? Yeah. Um, but I do like performing, you know, the performing aspect of it is super exciting. And again, you just get to kind of showcase with, with how competitive cheer, uh, competitive cheerleading is um, nowadays, you know, it's very, very athletic. It's really like the tumbling part of it is a huge part. And um, so, yeah, so that was always my favorite part. It was, I mean, to me, it's like one big floor routine. You know what I mean? Like you have music, mm -hmm. you have, you yeah. know, um, the, the hardest part about it is that it's a team sport where um, gymnastics is very individual. So that's kind of the hardest, uh, that was like the hardest, um, I guess, uh, transition there because as much as tumbling is individual, the whole thing, you know, um, I yeah. guess on the competition side of it is a team, is a team effort. So that's hard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like when you're competing on your own, like everything falls on you and it's mm -hmm. kind of your fault. 
if you yep. messed up. But yep. then competing as a team, like you have less pressure because yep. not everything is in, on your hands, but on the same on the same side, like if somebody messes up and you do your work, it's like, you know, that dealing with that when there's so much variables when you're dealing with a team. But I yeah. guess that and, and also like the fact that you have to be a performer like yeah. while you're cheering because that's your yeah. your purpose. So that's great. Do you have like any injuries do, during those years as a cheerleader or as a um, gymnast? Um, honestly, like I'm all, just for some reason, my knees, it's just something with my, <laughs> I'm an E person. So um, in gymnastics, nothing was uh, significant. I mean, you know, little things here and there. Mm -hmm. But um, when I cheered in college um, was the first time I had was the uh, first knee surgery I had. So Wow. Um, what age? So I was probably 20, 20 or 21. Yeah, so it was more towards the end. Um, that last year I was cheering. Um, I the, Yeah, that was the first knee surgery I had. And that, that was your left knee or your right knee? Because I remember at the 18 games when we went with you, Gerardo, that we talked about one of your knees and then you messed up the other one <laughs> right. during the games that we can get into that in a little bit. So you yeah. had the first surgery at 20 on which knee? It was my right, right, my right. Your right knee. And was it a meniscus or torn ACL? Yeah, it was just a meniscus. Just, I'm like, it's just a. Uh -huh. <laughs> <It was> just, <laughs> um, yeah, so it was a meniscus tear. And um, so it was uh, just like a scope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they sort of clean it and that's it. A little bit of rehab and, and you're good to go. And yeah. you were able to perform after I did. Yeah. I, it was a little closer to like our big, like in college you have, um, like one big competition at the end of the year. So it was a little closer to that. So I, I did tumble. I was able to perform, but not to like my hundred percent, but yeah, I was yeah. out there. Cool. Mm -hmm. And do you compete like at other high level, um, competition like words or in cheer or some sort of nationals at gymnasts? like before the games or the regionals because you're also a regionals athlete bat when when CrossFit did that like or was it CrossFit like your first big stage competition um when I was in gymnastics my level so I competed and I was a level 10 gymnast so wow. um that was uh there was a few competitions that were more on the regional level like I traveled quite a bit you know um uh so but and then in college, um, it just so happened that our nationals um, was right there in Daytona Beach. So for us, it's, I mean, yeah, it's you, you, you did a twenty minute drive and that's it. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, that that far, was the so. worst. Back yeah. when we compete, I used to be a Olympic weightlifter. So always when we have the like the 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 big competition against the other universities called the Lai La Lai. Um, we always were like swearing to be on Mayagüez or Ponce, so we get to you know travel and stay travel, other yeah. place, some some sort of nice hotel or whatever. Yeah, and spend yeah. The, yeah, that's nice. Okay, so you end up college and then you started coaching, right? But at cheerleading. Yep. Yeah. So I you started spent a few years at a. I started coaching at a high school first. And then the kind of the world of competitive cheerleading, all-star cheerleading was becoming more and more popular where we were then, I was then able to open up like a gym strictly for cheerleading. Wow. Um, so that was, yeah, pretty young. I was early, early twenties there. And um, so I've been, yeah, I've been coaching ever since pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So you have 20 years more or less plus Easy. doing yeah. coaching so yeah. many athletes, right? What's your favorite your favorite part about being a coach like? Well, cheerleading, um, I, I obviously I love tumbling. I coach tumbling a lot, you know, or that's what my favorite thing to do is. Right now I do a lot of um, like private lessons, personal training sessions with kids to like learn specific skills. So it's kind of cool that they there's a goal there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I and how to do my back handspring and it's like you see the progression you know they work so hard and then they actually get this skill so that's kind of like my favorite thing to do is is you know kind of have a goal in mind and build up you know to like achieve that goal and then it's like okay what's the next goal you know that kind of thing so um and again it's the tumbling part of it even now um i like to 
do it. I like to teach it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so just the, like the tumbling uh, part of it, really. And then it's cool because CrossFit, there's a, a version of CrossFit I can bring into, you know, tumbling and vice versa. There's a version of yeah. tumbling yeah. that I can bring into to CrossFit gymnastics. Um, so, you know, the g gymnastics side of CrossFit obviously is my favorite um, thing to coach uh, on the CrossFit side of it. Um, but also just like, I really like to work with beginners. I mean, I really like to, whether it's a beginner into just regular fitness, a beginner into uh, like, you know, tumbling, like kids, mm -hmm. or even a beginner into like competing in CrossFit, you know what I mean? Like just kind of that beginner stage. Like I like to kind of help, um, I don't know, kind of mold that. I don't know. You like to, I like to see the, the, the love of the sport, you know, where people fall in love with the sport, right? They fall in love with trying to get, you know, achieve a goal, you know, that kind of thing. So that part of it is really cool too. Yeah. I think that that's the part that, that we as, as a coach, like we love the most because you get to see somebody like a zero level and then get mm -hmm. from here, from here, even if it is like getting someone to the trusted games or just yep. getting someone to do a full uh, air squat or something yep. like that, yep. that simple, mm -hmm. like, that's so, that's so great. How was it in your case, like when you first saw like a keeping pull up or butterfly pull up, like, like from being from, from a gymnastics perspective, because in, on, on my case, obviously when you do Olympic weightlifting, you just do one rep or two reps and stuff like that. And you try to do it as neat and perfect as possible. And then yep. when I, when I saw the first competition, I was traumatized. Like what the <laughs> fuck are these guys doing? Like it was crazy. Was it, was it the same to you? Like seeing people doing keeping or butterfly and stuff yeah. like that, or walking, you know, doing handsome walks, like a scorpion uh, like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I've definitely had to learn to compromise. I think mm -hmm. I'm good at, I've, I've had to work on my, yeah, my skills and compromise because, um, it's, <laughs> it's tough. Not so much the kipping because I mean, that's swinging on a bar. Like we've done mm -hmm. that, you know, plenty of times. Yeah. So, and I understand the, the, the different variations and you can do a really pretty kipping pull up. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. So, um, yeah, it's just a, it's just a, it's the, it's the skill of compromise where I can, again, bring a little bit of the real, I don't want to say real gymnastics. I hate to say that, but the real gymnastics world into the CrossFit world. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I, uh, there's some things that I will, I will compromise. And then there's just some portions of it that I'm not, I can't budge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the same here. The it's the same body here. Is a hollow body. It, it is, it is. Body. It is, it is. And it's because like on our case, we're so used to like you know executing every movement perfectly and at 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 a perfect level even when when the kids are I don't know like until maybe 14 years old or so here or not here in Puerto Rico, but in weightlifting, they don't get, it's a appreciation sport. So they don't, they don't win just by lifting weights. Yeah. They win by right. technique. So it's the same yep. on your sport. So mm -hmm. obviously we have that, you know, critic eye on the technique and then in CrossFit, yep. you can get away with shitty technique. Yep. Yep. And that was a shock like at first. So how do you get to CrossFit, to the CrossFit world? Like what was your, 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 your introduction? Yeah. So my friends, um, she, I was a teacher at the time I was 30 years old. Okay. So fast forward, I'm 30 and I was a teacher at, a t at the time and I got a phone call from a friend from high school. So it's been honestly probably 10 years since I had heard from this girl. Right. So she asked me to do some lessons. She knew that I was, uh, you know, a gymnast that I owned a gym and da da. da. Mm -hmm. And she asked me to do some lessons on to teach her how to do a handstand. And you're like, um, what? I'm yes. 30. I'm like, I'm like, girl, we're 30 years. Old. Like, why do you, you know, I, I do lessons with kids all the time, but never they're like, not their parents, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, at the time I didn't do it with the parents. Now it's different. Um, so I kind of, I was just kind of like, why are we learning how to do a handstand? I don't understand. So she was like, she told me about CrossFit and I spent the whole next like planning period, like, you know, researching what CrossFit was because I wanted to teach her properly. Like I wanted to understand her world, you know? So, um, so yeah, that's how I did it. So, um, 
I started with her uh, doing lessons and then, I mean, it was like months later before I was like, okay, I'll try to, you know, and I went into like the on-ramp class, you know, um, at the gym that she was going to. And um, so I started that and then it still even took me months after that. I'm like the, the worst mm-hmm. prospect ever. Cause I was like, oh yeah, I'll come, I'll come, I'll come. And I never went, took me a, a little while. And then I, yeah, started just doing classes And I was, again, that member that like would do like one or two classes a week. I would rush in there probably late, you know, get that class and then run out, not even talking to anybody just because I started to fall in love with it. But I, the time was just so hard. There was just so many things going on. It was really hard to get there. So I tried my best um, and tried to get there at least once or twice a week. So were you hooked like at, 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 at first? And or or were you like a little bit skeptical, like about the whole four time stuff and and the modalities? Because I I bet that coming from gymnastics, you probably have like some structure, right? And then maybe now it's a little bit more sophisticated. But back then the workouts were like, let's just do crazy workouts so we can get people to puke and stuff like that. And then yeah. we have Rabdo and the clan, yeah, no. and, and that was yeah. like a cult, like crazy, like. The, the, the sole purpose of programming was to get people, you know, done, trash yeah. after a workout. So how was it for you? Like, well, I feel like I was super fortunate. I always had good coaches, so I never felt like it was like a, like, let's everybody like kill yourselves, you know, to yeah, do it. That's yeah. great. That's great. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I never, I never felt like that. I'm not quite sure that I would fall in love with the beat downs all the time. I'm not, mm-hmm. a, uh, again, it's really hard for me to get into that, you know, space of just that grind, you know, that kind of thing. I'm like, that's the hardest part is like going from perfection to like going as fast as you can, you know, it like is. that's for me, that's a, a really, it's like, oh, I thought I was going fast, you know, and then it's like, no, you don't yeah. have to perfectly, you know, salute every time, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, But yeah, no, I always, uh, I, I just didn't have the time at the time. I don't think I really thought too much of it. I really liked the change in my body, you know, um, by the style of workouts. I liked the challenge of every day of the classes. I liked that it was different all the time. I really, um, it just kept, kept me intrigued and wanting more, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and it was kind of cool because I didn't start having the time to go every single day. It was only, again, a couple times a week. So I really left like wanting more and like f- trying to, you know, find the time and make it work. Um, so I think it just kind of like, I mean, yes, I was hooked, but in, I think in a different way than than most people, because it just kind of, I just wanted more every time. So it was very, I was very excited every time going into the gym. That's great. And what about like your, your coaches, like your first coach, when he saw you, I don't know, like maybe doing handsome push or, or pull-ups or stuff like that, like seeing, like it happens, like when you, you're, you know, um, teaching a, a class for normal people and stuff. And then all of a sudden you have a former gymnast and they start mm-hmm. doing everything perfect. Like you can tell, you yep. can tell. So yep. h- how was in your case? Well, it's funny because at the beginning, so the girl, um, Nicole, who brought me to the gym, Mm -hmm. she would, uh, she would be like, oh, okay, here's a, you know, here's a bar, do a, like a kipping, you know, pull up or whatever. And and I'm like, okay, show me. I'm more of like a visual. I'm like, Mm -hmm. okay, show me. And then I would like go up and do it. And it was kind of like, they were, it was, it was bad. And everyone's like, what? Like, you know, how, how? (laughs) Yeah. They're like mad at me for like, just kind of being able to do it, you know? Um, So my, um, uh, so the people, like some people were like, oh, okay, try this, you know, do this, you know, that kind of thing. It was, uh, some movements were super easy for me and especially like a handstand, but in a class, like if you think about when you take classes and you only do classes once or twice a week Mm -hmm. and you kind of don't know too much about CrossFit, I didn't even know handstand walking was a thing. You know what I mean? Like in CrossFit, um, Because when I was teaching Nicole, it was like we were doing mostly just going up into a handstand and like handstand push-ups. And we did do a little bit of handstand walking, but she wasn't there yet. So it was hard to, you know, like, and in a, again, a regular class setting, handstand walking wasn't programmed like all the time, you know. Yeah. So, um, so I didn't even know, you know, that, that kind of stuff. 
it wasn't like I could highlight or, sh you know, show, show these skills because we didn't even do them in the class, you know? So it took a while for, um, certain movements where I was, you know, could, could actually do it or perform it and then compete it. Like, even then it's like, you know, I'm always like, please let it, you know, let it be there and, you know, things like that. But I had a hard time with certain skills that I'm, you know, supposed to be good at, like strict handstand push-ups took me a long time. You know, again, I'm, um, you're, you're big, handstand. you have long strength. Yeah, so it's, it's always going to be hard for you. Yeah. Exactly. And um, ring muscle ups were super hard. I mean, I'm like that weird athlete. Yeah, I jumped up and did a bar muscle up probably the first time I tried it. But a ring muscle up took me years. It took me years and years wow. and years to to get a ring muscle up. So there's definitely still some elements of it, because although I was a gymnast, we didn't like the male gymnasts do rings. Female gymnasts don't really yeah. do rings. So yeah. I never really uh, had done too much on rings. Yeah, so you were you were as amateur or, or rookie as the other people in the class because you never had that experience or that yeah. exposure to, to the rings yeah. because like the best scenario for a girl is doing the parallels, right? The, the, yeah. yeah. The uneven bars, yeah. So the bar part of it, you know, pull-ups and, and bar muscle-ups, that part's easy. I grew up doing that, but not the exactly. rings. And the rings, it's... It was, it's almost, again, it's, it's in that break of the perfection mentality. Cause if I do, if I try and do ring muscle up in a, you know, perfect hollow body kind of position, it's crazy. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. Hard. And so for until, reps, even harder. Right. right. So until I kind of learned that, oh wait, some movements I have to, um, almost break position, right? I can't be perfect. Like lo loosen up that body position for just a second, just a split second, you know, and then, you know, there's certain movements that we can kind of hit back there. So it's like, it's still that, that, that compromise, right? That like perfection attitude that like, I have to, had to adjust a lot, a lot. But I feel you totally. Like for me, it was the touch and go part. For me, it was mm -hmm. so hard. You know, yeah. I was national champion at the time, so I have a really heavy snatch comparing like mm -hmm. to, to, to obviously to the people doing weightlifting and even more for the people doing CrossFit at the time. So, but then if we had to do Isabel, for example, it was 30 at 135, which was like less than, I don't know, like 50% mm -hmm. for me or so, maybe less. And yeah. for me it was hard because I, I mm -hmm. couldn't, I couldn't cycle it, but it was that yep. part like. I have to break form here yep. or bend the yep. arms before yep. and this and that. So it took me for me like two years probably yep. to really, really, really like nail that technique on touching goals. Yep. And even a little bit more for snatches, like cleans, yep. I got it first. Obviously shoulder to her head was pretty easy because Ooh, some, yep. so, sometimes at the gym we, we did that that kind of movements for explosiveness and stuff. But then I, I totally feel you. So let's fast forward a little bit um i guess that you started maybe going a little bit more frequent to the gym uh, mm -hmm. and where when did you get like your first try at the crossfit open and how how did it went for you oh i did the crossfit open the like i was brand new to crossfit the coach at the time was teaching me how to snatch before it was like a snatch i think it was like snatch. <laughs> what? yes it was like what? snatches and burpees something like that and he was like teaching me like helping me how to snatch before i did the work was it the worker that has like snatches and burpees like going yes. up with weight, up the, weight. yeah wow, it was yeah. Like that worker was brutal that worker was yes. brutal but um and i got to like i remember getting to like maybe 105 something like that and that was like mind-blowing you know what i mean <laughs> it was just like it was crazy it was crazy so i did the open because our gym was pretty competitive and super fun and everybody kind of did, um, you know, everyone did it. So I always did the open and then just progressed more and more every year. It's funny because if you look at my, like, um, my rankings for the past like 10 years. So at the time, you know, um, I would try and just like cut it in half. So it was like the first year you're like, you know, yeah. 50, thousand place, yeah. you know, and then the next year I was like 25,000 place. And then I was like, you know what I mean? Like I just, every year, I had seemed to like cut it in half, you know? So that was pretty cool. Um, that was pretty cool to see. And now you're top of the world, like top five. Yeah. So that's crazy. <laughs> and it's so great. How was it for you, like doing snatches? Like for example, in my case, and because of, of Olympic weightlifting, I tend to hyper the back. Mm -hmm. But then on gymnastics is yeah. 
the contrary. So, for yeah. example, when I do handsome walks, I, I need to really concentrate or handsome push-ups and stuff like that. Was it the yeah. same for you? Like, because you're used to this position, but then when you're when you're doing a snatch, for example, you're supposed to go like that. Like, could you, was it easy to you, like, do that transition or, or you were used to, you know, being in, in a hollow position, even though you yeah, had a I mean, barbell in your hands? The body positions were pretty easy. I can hollow arch. I can, I understand. I know my body position. The hardest thing for weightlifting for me was the toes. I was on my toes for everything, right? Because in gymnastics, yeah. we bounce, right? We're bounding, bounding, bounding. So I was on my toes uh, for everything. I would go forward, you know, hop forward, toes, toes, toes. So I would go, I would focus so much on just being on my heels so much that I would, my first shoes, I would have a hole in the toe, like where what? you flex. Yeah. So I'd like flex my feet and I would get a hole in my shoes right where my toenail, like would, because I would be pushing up so much. Yeah. To try and stay like, to try and stay back on my heels. Cause that, that, wow. that was definitely the hardest thing. I was always like, I was, I was just forward. I was always on my toes. Yeah. What's your snatch one RM right now? Um, <laughs> I did at a competition recently. It was before the games, but it was in this year. <laughs> this year, uh, it was 190. Nice. So you went but all my, over from 105 to 190. That's great. And oh yeah. But my forever total, like this was before knee surgeries and whatever. It was only. It was still 195. Yeah. Great. So you're 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 at 97 percent. Yeah. With with two surgeries, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And being, That's and great. I was, you know, again, 41, 42, something like that. Yeah, it was this year, yeah. definitely this year. That's great. That's great. So um, you did your first open and obviously you had like that mentality of cutting in half and half and half. So you have that urge to compete or at least like oh, to, yeah. you know, to, to push yourself. Mm -hmm. And your first regionals back when we had regionals, you did it on teams, yep. right? Yep. How was that was experience, like having somebody putting your number right here and putting yourself through the chorus and these other athletes and people maybe like 10 years younger than you, yeah. like, how was it? So, um, uh, for, to put it in perspective, it was, it was so fun. It was so exciting. I was on a team and we got, it was when regionals was in Atlanta, Georgia. So we got to travel and the nice. girl who brought me into CrossFit, she was on the same team. As wow, me. that's so perfect. It was, yeah, it's a full circle I mean, moment right there. I mean, it was, we had the, I mean, all I can say is we had the best time. Every workout was just kind of like, you know, just all of it was such, on a, was such a bigger scale. You know, everything was, um, there was definitely no pressure. There was definitely challenges in the workouts. You know, mm -hmm. we had our own, um, our own goals. Um, and it, I just, I did, I, it was so much fun. We weren't like in the top anywhere either. So there was like really like no pressure. It was just yeah, yeah. like gain yeah. experience and that's it. And get used to the competition floor and maybe learn. I like, went to look to the other guys, went to put pressure yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah that's and great. the people we were with were just awesome. Again, the whole experience, the team was awesome. You know, and the fact that I got to be and compete with Nicole and, and, um, it was, it was really cool. It was really cool. Great. And then right after you qualify for the regionals also, and then to the master's category, right? When they open, open that up. Yeah, 2017 was the first year that they opened yeah. 30, 39. So yeah. I think I was like 38 or 37 or 38 at the time. Um, so uh, that was the first year that we were able to uh, qualify for the games was 2017. Great. And what was your plan? Like, we which one do you prefer? Because there were some athletes that, like, I remember, I think that Bridges back then, like, he denied the invitation for the master competitions and mm -hmm. he tried for the, for the individuals. Like, what was your perspective? Like, did you want it to try both or, like, to just use the regionals, like, maybe as a experience type of thing to prepare yeah. you to the, to the other part for the masters? Like, how was it? I always, yeah, I always wanted to make regionals as an individual because even in 2016 i had told the guy that if i had made it individually i was going to go individual um and i just missed it then so I, I went team and then 2017 was the same thing but i didn't go 
um, I didn't go to regionals in 2017. It was 2018 that I had done. I had finally made it to regionals. I was like, again, 38 years old, 39 years old. <laughs> yeah. I finally made it to regionals. And um, uh, yeah, so that was, uh, that was the year. Um, I didn't want to make the games ever. I don't feel like I ever was like, you know, I want to go for the games as an individual. I just think at that point in time, I was like, I'm a lot older and it's, you know, I don't think it ever crossed my mind. And it definitely didn't cross my, when at one of the games, I forgot, I think I, t I told this story before, the marathon row that the individuals had to do, you know, the, um, yeah, that was, the that was on your year, um, 2018 when we went. Okay. So yeah. there was, so I just remember that day where they, uh, this is, I know I'm fast forwarding, but I was at the games and I was getting ready to leave because I was done for the day, right? And yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm exhausted. I can't wait to go back to the hotel, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it's what, maybe, I don't know, five o'clock, six o'clock. Mm -hmm. And the individuals were walking in to, in the to a marathon. Yeah. To, do the, to do the marathon with like a four hour, you know, time cap or whatever it was. And I remember, I remember thinking in that moment, like, I don't have to do regionals anymore. <laughs> yeah, and, and that I day was so brutal. Master. That day was yeah. so brutal for them. I remember like, Obviously, since we have Her Heraldo competing, we have like seats on the on the stadium. And I remember that we finished the day just like you because we were yep. in the age group. And then they were like, let's go and see the row. I was like, I'm trash. I don't know about you. You should go to rest. Yeah. Yeah. I have no energy and yeah. I'm not willing to see these guys like fucking row for four hours. Yep. And that's it. You know, like yep. there's nothing interesting to see. Mm -hmm. But that day was brutal. Yep. Even for the younger guys, I remember that yep. Noah Olsen posted like he he lost like ten or twelve pounds. That was Ooh. crazy on that event only. So yeah. I, I I can imagine like having that. So on that year, we all have a big surprise because we all thought that Geraldo was the only one from from Puerto Rico, and mm -hmm. then all of the sudden, uh, when when they started the the ceremony, we have two more, which is which was you and and Ida. And we mm. were so glad, you know, you know at first yeah. we were confused. We were, who are those two girls over there? And there yeah. was like, oh my God, we have three people. So yeah, it was way better. How was that feeling for you? Like, because I remember that when we were sign signing in, like they asked um, on which country you were born, stuff like that. But we didn't knew about the ceremony at all. So when they <laughs> gave, so when they gave Gerardo the, the uniform, and we yeah. saw the flag on the back. We were so, I started, you know, crying like a little bit. Yes. Yeah. How was that, that feeling for you? That I think was the same for me because they, we didn't know about the ceremony and they, you know, they you write where you're born. So I put where I was mm -hmm. born. So when I got the jacket also, and I had the Puerto Rican flag on the back, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And then when we checked in for the parade or whatever, the, the ceremony, my name, it was either my name was on both lists or my name was on one, but I ha I forgot how it mm -hmm. went. All I know is they said, well, you can go, you know, you can go, you can go wherever you want, whichever, one. pretty much you can, you know, go wherever you want. So, um, so I was like, I'm going to go over there. Nice. <laughs> you know, there was like a thousand people over here and I was like, well, where is it? You know, and it was kind of down the way. Um, so it was so cool. It was, I mean, again, that games, it, that that is the only thing that just kind of revives me from this like hole I was kind of in because I was so injured and so hurt. And uh, I almost didn't even go to the ceremonies because I was like, I'm just going to rest, you know, like take care yeah, of Yeah, because knees. that was on, on our second day because the first yep. day we had the, the, the obstacle course and then we yep. have the, the shoulder the tour head, I think, and the handstand wall with the ramp yeah. and the yeah. snatches. And yeah. then... Um, you had your 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 injury with your mm -hmm. right knee, right? Yep. And mm -hmm. just before the games, you had a injury yep. on your left knee. Yeah. Yeah. So you were pretty bad, like. I was just, and I was, I just remember the whole, because it was the snatch double under workout that my right knee, I, it was on double, I was jumping and it just like exploded. So that night, I mean, it was just like, I just, I mean, I, I don't think I've cried so much in my entire life, you know? And I was like, I don't know what to do. And so I was just trying to like take care of my knee and, and uh, I almost didn't go, but um, uh, I'm so And it's happy. crazy because you, you were working so hard for all these years and then you finally oh, yeah. got there. 
and you were like surviving a previous injury yeah. and then all of a sudden having one in the other knee blowing up on the yeah. workout like on the spot yeah. did the medical staff notice or so i went to the medical staff And I started uh, because, I, you know, it's kind of like limping off the off the stage kind of. So um, I went to them and they start to like, you know, assess you, like evaluate your, yeah. you know, your situation. And I just remember thinking at a certain point, like the questioning kind of turned into it was. Like, Are you oh, able wait. to compete or so? Yes. They, yeah. I said it wasn't it was like, oh, wait, they might tell me that I can't compete. You know what I mean? So I just, yeah. I don't, I, I forgot what type of questioning it was that it was like, um, and then I was like, you know, okay, I'm fine. <laughs> I'll just go, you know, I'll ice it, you know. And then trying to suck it up and walk upright. Yes. Yes. I really did kind of feel like, oh, wait, I think they can tell me that I, I'm not allowed to compete, you know? So that was, that yes i did see them briefly and then uh, they just kind of gave me some options and you know just kind of evaluating so um so yeah and then i had thankfully that year i had um my massage therapist he was there at the competition wow, with me that year great. so yeah so got a lot of he had work, of work to do a lot of work to do he had a lot of work to do maybe a little more like emotionally than physically. yeah 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 i know <laughs> the poor guy but yes yes he had a lot of work to do <laughs> and 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 we were lucky that year because we had that like that awkward rest day after the first day and so yeah. that definitely yeah. helped that help you help yeah. you out and then you get yeah. all that electricity and all that people cheering for you it, and then you're holding the flag It was, it was amazing that that's, I'm telling you that ceremony really kind of revived a lot. So it was awesome. Very cool. Yeah. It was so awesome. I, th those, that moment is like one of the, you know, like the happiest moments because I say as an athlete, like you always want to represent your country and stuff, but mm -hmm. then like getting on other, your athlete, you know, over there and, and seeing, seeing him, holding the flag and, and everything was just, it was great. Like I didn't care about what happened for the rest of the yeah, weekend. Like, right. Yeah. It doesn't matter. So I remember those games obviously a lot because we were there, like which, which was your favorite event. Obviously I know that it's kind of hard because you were having a, a hard time during the, the whole yeah. event, but do you have like one event that you like more than, than the other ones? Well, the whole first day was awesome. And not only because I wasn't really injured at the time, but it was so dynamic, it was whole, right? It was, it was so dynamic I mean, the and different. obstacle course, you know, it's different and fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't like CrossFit workout. It was so different. So the obstacle course was awesome. Of course, the handstand walking workout, I, I always like, think is a good easy. time. <laughs> and then I like, I really like snatches too. So that was a heavy snatch. Um, It was a little bit of a ladder, you know, for the snatches. So that was the you exactly. Know, the you were competing against Sam Briggs right that yeah, year. So yeah. so you the you get to pull a, a win over here on the handsome walk right on that event. Uh, the handsome walk and the obstacle and, course and, and the, the obstacle snatches. course. <laughs> that's, nice. That's all I got. That's all yeah, I got. You were like, that's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is all I have on Sam Briggs is handsome walking and heavy snatches. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. But that's yeah. great. Like, I mean, obviously, you had that thought about, you know, I don't want to do regionals no more. But then having a, a, a an athlete like her, like going up to the yeah. Masters and then getting yourself against her, so you can, you know, mm -hmm. see where you at and, yep. and maybe what you need to work on for the next mm -hmm. years and stuff. And obviously, um, you're different athletes, so you're going to have a wheelhouse, and she's going to have yep. a her wheelhouse, yeah. but. Yeah. That's great. Well, you know, that, that event, that first day, what's so dynamic and different that like even the plane feel a little bit because on the, on the obstacle course, it was just like, you know, run and that's it. Yeah. And yeah. everyone get to try it once or twice. I don't know about you guys, like, but just the day before you, did you get to try it once or twice? I don't remember. Course? I think I just the, once the lucky thing is I got to do it the year before. So the, it was the same obstacles. Mm -hmm. but peace like yeah peace different, different. Yeah. yeah yeah so um i had gotten you know a chance the year before to know how it 
what, what obstacle to do certain things and, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah, we did practice the day before. I think it was the day before or maybe even earlier that day. I don't even remember. But um, yeah, we did get to practice maybe once or twice. Yeah. What about and what about like, have you ever repeat a workout from the games like to to reassess or see where you add or, or progress yeah. and stuff like that? I've I've retested. I don't quite. I don't think too much into it though, because the circumstances are so different. Yeah, it's you know different. what I mean? Like it's different. And, and again, for 2018, that was just different in all create, you know, all different types yeah. of uh, situations. But I think, um, yes, I do. And I feel like if I'm just, if I'm anywhere close, like if I didn't beat it, if I'm anywhere close, I think I'm like on the right track because you know, when you get there, it's, it's just so different, you know, it's different in the gym doing it by myself versus being at the CrossFit games, you know, doing it with the best in the world, you know, um, or doing it on day four, you know, and it's the last workout, you know, that kind of thing. So I do retest I ha or I have retested, but I don't, I don't think too much into it. I just, I remember retesting one this year and I was like 20 seconds off and I was like, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Cause I was like, I was younger then, you know, like just there's- just Yeah, there's so many variables that you have to get into so, that. It's not only like your actual score, but there's a yeah. whole, you know, other yeah. things that are, that are supposed to be in there. But that's yeah. great because we don't do it that often either, but there's like maybe one workout or two that we always like kind of repeat to see where we at. Yep. Yeah. And and always is like the the workout that Gerardo was you know at his worst like the, mm -hmm. the, the so because obviously if he was you know last place on a workout with burpees we're going to do a lot of burpees and then reassess that and see exactly. and see where he's at which brings me to the to my other question so what about your programming do you have a coach do you have somebody in charge of that yeah so I follow a training think tank. Um, Kyle Ruth is um, my coach from um, Training Think Tank. Pretty much half the year, I follow their online compete program. Okay. Um, and then the when I get a little more into the higher level competitions, I will have him individually program for me. Um, so and he's been my coach now for like oh my gosh, like probably four or five years. So he knows me very well. <laughs> yeah, that's great, and I guess that. Obviously, after the surgeries and the injuries and stuff, you need, you know, that attention. So yep. so you can, you know, take care of your knees and still yep. be able to compete at a at a high level. Um, yeah, I mean, other, right after my surgeries, yeah. I didn't have I didn't have a coach. I wanted to just like my physical therapist was my, you know, was my coach. Like I just wanted to really take the rehabs seriously and I would do I would obviously stay in shape myself in the gym um do all my PT and I didn't have Kyle um or uh until like I was almost you know fully recovered I guess recovered. You could say. yeah um because it was funny because my PT at the time he would say something like okay um with squatting weight right he he wasn't a crossfitter but um he would say, okay, you can do 50%, you know, squatting. And I was yeah. like, okay, well, my all time PR is like, you know, 300 pounds. I was like, okay, so I can do 150 pounds. And he was like, are you crazy? No, nope. <laughs> nope. like, no. And I was like, you told me 50%. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was definitely, um, you know, interesting, uh, working with only a PT because they don't quite understand the CrossFit way, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 really different. Like when you get to to know somebody from from that part of the spectrum of fitness, like they think pretty different. For example, yeah. like they don't like sometimes to squat below parallel or stuff yeah. like that. And you're like, we all, I'm squatting yeah. below like every other day. It doesn't matter, single leg, well, he, whatever. Yeah, he um is actually uh, again. I'm so fortunate. He is one of my cheer coaches at the gym. He's a, a PT, also, and so. So you have him right right, right on 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 your yeah, headquarters. I mean, so, yeah. Yeah. Anytime I kind of you know need him, he's kind of right there. But I would. I mean, he knew from the. He knows. He knows me too, and he knows yeah. that it's like. Don't tell me that I can't do A, B, and C because I'm I'm not gonna listen to you. I will tumble. <laughs> mm -hmm. I will squat squat below parallel. I will so like you know give me the doctor that's gonna help me do that. You know what yeah. I mean? And he he referred the um 
the knee doctor to me, um, you know, kind of. There we go. So sorry, I lost connection there for a second. Okay. Okay. So you were telling me you have him right there and you have the, you know, get, you have him get you to a doctor so you can, you know, do, do your stuff and continue your training yeah. at high level. Yeah. Cause I was like, I still want to compete and I'm still going to tumble, you know, for fun. And I'm still going to, you know, I have the squat below parallel. So it was kind of one of those, like, you know, I need someone to support, you know, I need a doctor that's going to support me. And the PT obviously supported me and, yeah. and coach Kyle obviously supports me. So, um, so yeah, it was definitely, uh, definitely, um, interesting working, working with a, a regular PT for a while. So sorry. There we are. <laughs> that was okay. So how in your case, obviously again, from, from gymnast side of the spectrum, like how, how's been dealing with CrossFit changes year, year and year, because obviously we had regionals and then we didn't, and then we have super regionals and then it was like through your country and all that different stuff. Like, how is it for you? Obviously there are even some surprises some years they change standards all of a sudden, like right yeah. before the workout. Actually, you have a situation, right, with the we we GHG seat ups the other the other year. So yeah. So how's that like dealing with that? I just right now there's been so many changes that I just kind of sit here. I feel like I just sit and wait, <laughs> mm -hmm. wait for the new rules, and then just kind of you know assess from there. Um, I plan even, even now I'm kind of like, okay, I plan to, yeah, like I'm going to go for the games again next year. I don't know what the rules are going to say. Is it going to be 10 of us? Is it going to be 20 of us? Are we going to yeah. compete yeah. online? Are we going to have to travel to compete? I don't know. So like in this moment I could say, yeah, we're going for the games again, but I don't know the structure of the season yet. So it's just kind of, I just wait for that and then just, you know. Yeah. So you're already, you're already used to it, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that emotional roller coaster for masters of the 20 people versus the 10 people, then back to 20 people and now back and to 10. And then back people. to 10. It's 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 a lot. It's and it's bro it's brutal because if if you're like on the on the bottom half like from 11 all the way to 20 like you're you're in danger. Like maybe yeah. not the 11 the 12 or the 13, but if you're mm -hmm. 18, you're you, you know, your chances are almost zero. Because yeah. all of a sudden, there's half people over there. Yeah. And for me, I'm not like the online competition. I'm not good at online stuff. It's just, it's difficult for it's me. It's weird. So it's weird. Like for the standards, um, the the actual rep, no rep stuff. Yeah. Um, because obviously, you're being judged by a friend or a colleague mm -hmm. or something. So yeah. maybe he's, you know. He's not as rigorous as a yep. a true yeah. judge at a competition event, and then sometimes they're they're pretty weird or ambiguous on on how everything's supposed to to go. Yep. I think that this year's um, quarterfinals was a little bit more specific in terms mm -hmm. of your barbell is supposed to be here, then yep. they're supposed to be like nine feet apart from here to yep. here. But like five years ago, that stuff didn't happen. I remember yeah. seeing Sarah, right. for example, in the first workout, no, the second workout of the Open, that they had, I think, roar, toast to wars, and other stuff. And she did the toast to war and then yeah. land over the <laughs> roar. And, you know, in her case, in her gym, she couldn't yeah. do that. But then maybe if your gym is not like that or as, yeah. or having that much space and stuff, you, so the, the plain thing, the playing field is not even for everyone. So th okay. those were the stuff that, you know, affect the competition. So definitely being able to compete, you know, at the Wadapalooza or competitions mm -hmm. like that is, I think that is a, a better option than doing yeah. online qualifiers by, by, Absolutely. by far. Absolutely. And I, so this year when it was only 10, I was like, oh man, this is just, it's so hard. Every it's year nuts. that I've qualified, I've been like 18th. You know what I mean? So, yeah, because you, um, as as the competition gets harder, you 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 rank better on the on yeah, the on, yeah yeah. So I this year I went up to training think tank in Georgia for the qualifiers. So I kind of made it more of a competition yeah. style for me because I knew that was for me. I think that's like the only way it's, it's going to happen because, um, you know, I put myself in the best, I guess. Uh, again, competition style environment. Yeah. Yeah. Can. 
that's so, a scenario that's a scenario that you want so you can yeah. be you know as as accurate as yep. possible and you know like competitive wise you want to be the other guy or the yep. other gal so you you yep. want to push it's not the yeah. same doing it at your gym or at your house yeah never yeah never at all so how was this game sedition like being programmed by another person like for example on the, on the case of the individuals we see things that maybe being my first year for example that maybe i wouldn't dare to do because obviously it's my first year but then he dared to do the, those mm -hmm. things and it, it, it went great like the parallels and the sandbags and yep. stuff like that yeah like did you feel I mean, the I, difference between the the two the two programmers like yeah i mean i i the we got to do the pegboard for the first time yeah. you know they they uh we did um yeah, the parallettes, a little different than the individuals, but we got to do the parallettes there. Um, and even, um, yeah, sandbag, the same, you know, farmer's carry and the, and even the swim, you know, all of it kind of, um, I mean, felt very, uh, I don't know, fresh, you know, it was, it was, I mean, it's been four years since I've been there and a lot, mm -hmm. I know that the programming for masters has been a little, you know, up and down. I feel like yeah. one year. I think one year it was, I think it was 2019 where they only took 10, the first year they only took 10 and that was the country thing and everything that I think it was a little, um, the programming, I feel like people were talking about how they just kind of shooed masters off to the side kind of situation. Yeah. So um, I'm, I was happy. Yeah. I think the pro for me programming, I, I, I'm actually the programming this year for me personally was not good right i'm mm -hmm. a, like we can say it i gymnastics is my thing like i didn't we didn't do any bar muscles any chest bar any toes bar and you know, yeah so so do... so the stuff that is on your wheelhouse you you did not yes. get to to do them nothing 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 so um the workouts for me personally were very, there was nothing heavy no heavy barbell you mm -hmm. know um the workouts for me were just very neutral. You know, when I saw all the workouts, I was like, oh boy. <laughs> like I just, it was all very neutral. Nothing was in my wheel wheelhouse. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was an, but programming in general, I thought it was cool. Again, I got to do the pegboard for the first time, the sandbag. Um, uh, Have you ever practiced it before? Me. Like the pegboard? Yeah. So I yeah. just, yeah. So I don't have one at my gym and I train once a week with a guy um, who uh, went to the games last year and he has a pegboard at his gym. So once a week, so probably like when everybody was talking about the new implements, you know, when um, Boz was going on all the podcasts and saying, Oh, there's yeah. going to be this and people are kind of, and I was like, Oh man, like what's something that the individual's have done, but we haven't done. Yeah. So obviously so, the peg, the peg was around I, there. I think the peg, I was like, I think it's the pegboard. And I, so I would do a few at his gym every time I went there because I was like, I just cool. don't want to, you know, be surprised. And yeah. I don't know because I can do one. That doesn't mean I can do, you know, five in a row, you know, yeah. or, with intensity or during a workout exactly. or maybe at last day or yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I was really happy that we had done it. It was only a couple of weeks, but yes, I was really happy that I had 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 done it there. So, when you're practicing for the games and and you're hitting your swimming practices, do you go like how how is it how different is it swimming like in South Florida versus yeah. on a lake in Madison? Yeah, it's well the beach is is definitely we go when we do open water. It's the beach, right? Um, and it's just unpredictable. I mean, of course, every time we schedule to go to the beach, there's like a thunderstorm coming in and the waves are like, you know, yeah, so this big. big. I mean, I bring people with me all the time because you just never know, you, you know. Don't know and then you the, don't know. Yeah, yeah. So um, I practice mostly in a pool. Um, but then when we got, we just did a few open water touches, you know, just to. Yeah. To get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's way different out there anyway. So it doesn't, you know, no, and in Madison is madness, not only because yeah. the lake and, you know, you can't see the bottom and it feels like muddy and stuff, but mm -hmm. that's the, like the only event that the whole category, men and women are thrown to the water at the same time. That's so, the problem. so that's yeah. the problem. I remember mm -hmm. talking about that to, to Geraldo back in 2018. And he even practiced with triathletes 
for yep. you know to they get to get that feeling like getting yep. open water with a, a lot of people like right next to you yep. but yep. he he ended up like 20 but yep. you know he was the last one and it took forever for him like he took so long that you guys were on the water already like on the first doing the yeah. first turn and he was mm -hmm. still on the water um wow. he had a panic attack and stuff yeah same, uh, same, and you had same. and you had one mm -hmm. so yep. actually when he got out he was holding so i was like this guy just injured himself but the, his his swimsuit was torn apart like oh my god oh, torn apart totally so i i, I totally get you know being mm -hmm. panicked in the yep. water so yeah. how was it like when you had that redemption the next year you know, swimming all over again, having, you know, knowing now that you're going to be thrown to the water with all these people, like, what's, what's the mindset getting into that? Well, event? I never had the redemption. I got dead last in 2018. So. But, but you yeah, didn't have the panic attack, right? I, no, I did. In both of them, I did. In both? Just, but in 2018, I knew how to manage it. That was the only thing. 2017, it was unexpected and I didn't know what was going on. And 2018, I was like, damn it, it's happening again. <laughs> so I knew how to just kind of manage it. I still didn't. So, and I worked so hard. Oh, that was so frustrating. I trained so hard for swimming and I just, mm -hmm. it just, but, um, but that's why I do like, we have a competition here in Florida. It's called Bacon Beatdown. It's in Daytona. Oh, now it's called something else, but, and there's always a beach swim, you know, Wadapalooza. There's always a swim mm -hmm. in the, in the, in the bay. So I, you know, try and practice and I do very well in those swims. So I knew my swimming was getting better. I'm more comfortable in the water. Um, it's just those, those, yeah. When people are on like swimming on top of you and it's just full, like, yeah, it's you know, crazy, chaos. It's crazy, it's crazy. It's really, that's the hard, that's definitely the hard part. So I'm, I'm, I'm like proud of my swimming every time again, water blues. I did really well this year in the swim part of it, you know, um, overall you did wet. I, yeah, yeah, crazy. yeah. I mean, I'm not a runner, so it was kind of one of those like you better get a head start because they're <laughs> gonna catch you on this run. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so uh, yeah, but just, just it's not so much the open water. I'm fine. Not I'm learning how to like uh, sight. Um, you know, the even the waves was fine that day. The mm -hmm. last day we went, the waves were insane, and um, it it wasn't it wasn't you know I wasn't uncomfortable. You know, I wasn't uncomfortable. Um, so it's just, you know, it's just little things here and there, but the swim this year was pretty cool, like completely different, you know, um, in the pool. So, um, so that was cool. That was cool to yeah. finally not get last place in a swim workout. <laughs> yeah, I know. What about yeah. talking about the, the, the Wadapalooza, like competing there, obviously the games are like a little bit more rigorous in terms yep. of everything like you have to be at this time yep. right here you mm -hmm. need to sign where you're going out and yada 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 like which one do you like the most do you like more the water palooza or do you like more the games like if you had like to choose like no i'm definitely choosing the games <laughs> yeah um Wadapalooza, i think we're you know we've come to our our, our end of Wadapalooza here at least personally for me so um so yeah, games is the is the ultimate goal uh, of the year. And then this year, I'm gonna I just um, accepted my invite to do Legends, um, which nice. is the Masters competition. And this year, it's in um, Cookville at Mayhem. So that'll be pretty interesting to see how that how that how that works, how that run, you know, how the competition runs. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, I know. Like I, when people ask me, since we've been on both, like I go like from a coach's or athlete's perspective, probably the games are way better because yep. are more structured like yep. on everything. But mm -hmm. then like a, for a, a spectator, well, maybe the water pollution because you get to, you know, you see the athletes like walking mm -hmm. around and stuff like that. Yeah. But then again, like sometimes stuff happens and like they don't have a plan B. Like I yeah. remember a few years ago, like last year they suspended like two events yeah and there was there was no plan b like at all no. so if you were on the fight for the podium or like defending one place against other other people 
and all of a sudden the event that was on your wheelhouse got suspended you know your your chances just go fade away you know that was exactly because me. of that that's exactly and what that's happened. what happened and then and then in your case you even got to the point where you didn't even know because they were paying yeah. so much attention to the elites and stuff like that yeah. And so I, yeah, I, I definitely that saw just, that last year. Like they were yeah, they just definitely prioritizing, much. yeah, prioritizing yeah. a lot more the elites instead of you guys. Yeah, and and not just us, like the scale divisions, the teenagers, yeah. the the intermediate, the art. You know what I mean? It's 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 it was. Uh, and then this year, I haven't even um, looked, uh, but I hear this year they're even cutting it now. So they're they're cutting our divisions even more. I think there's only like five or ten in the yeah. masters, you know, to compete. So it just, to me, it's not, I live right here and I don't, I just, it's just not. Yeah. And, 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 and with, an, with, a, with five people, it's, I don't know. It's like, why would you even bother? Like if you have yeah. one bad event, you're out. It's, well, and five people, it's not to me, if it's five, if it's, if that's true, again, I haven't even looked at the, 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 the um, competition, but I mean, that's just a throwdown with your friends. That's not a, uh, yeah, you know, that's is. not a competition. Because you know, like you said, I mean, you're going to kind of know. It's either that or everything's just so cutthroat. Like everything, you know, that there's, it, it's just, it's tough. It's tough. It's definitely tough. And then, um, you know, for Legends, I think they're taking like 30 people, you know. So I'm like, okay, that's more yeah. like a competition. And for me, I did Legends a couple years ago. Also for the games. I mean, it's the best in the world. You know, there's yeah. there might have only been ten of us, but five of us were from different parts of the different world. Different places, yeah. Yeah, these, there's three girls. I mean, they did not speak English. You know what I mean? Like this is, I mean, it's it's definitely a world um, competition. And Legends was cool when I went a couple years ago um, because you know I live on you know the East Coast, and when I went out there to compete, there was a bunch of girls from like California and Arizona, and it's like. I don't know these, you know, I've never competed against these girls. Yeah. I don't know these girls. So it's cool to meet people from a different part of the country, you know? Um, so, cause when yeah, you do there's that, you know, really that, like that, that, that people. feeling of mystery that you don't know, like yeah. if she's good at lifting or yeah. good at, you know, if she's a grinder, like what kind mm -hmm. of athlete they are and yeah. how's, how's the, the, the locker room like for, for you gals, like with Gerardo and the teenagers, they're, they're, pals like they're best yeah. friends here yeah. the whole weekend <laughs> but i don't know like in your case since you know you're adults and stuff like if you if you're you make friends over there of of or if there's tension between you guys like during the, the no, whole weekend like, how, how how does it you know how does it work with you guys i don't think that there i mean there's tension in the form of your focus when it's time to focus mm -hmm. on competing mm -hmm. but definitely not tension in in like talking yeah there's no the drama time. there's no drama at all no 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 everyone's super cool and um i mean again there's certain girls i feel bad because they don't even speak english so you know there are a few that are kind of on the you know the outside so that's a little mm -hmm. hard to communicate but um you know, for the most part, no. I mean, I, I enjoy kind of getting to know um, these girls or, you know, talking to them. Um, some people, again, you can tell are very, it's just, I think, how you how you process competition. Are you a nervous, you know, quiet competitor? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, but it's not tension. I don't think it's tension in the fact of, I mean, obviously when we get on the floor, we want to beat each other. That's not, you know, that's still, it's competitive. But yeah, it is what it not, is. Um, it's, it's really, it's a... Uh, um, it's pretty cool backstage. Yeah. That's great. So mm -hmm. your next step is going to the, to that event legends at mayhem. And mm -hmm. then you're trying for the open and all the qualifying yeah. crosses all over again. Yeah. Cool. Let's do Have, it again. <laughs> great. Great. Have you ever yeah. heard about the, the international functional fitness federation? Um, yes, I think so. I haven't followed it in a little bit, so I'm not quite sure what the updated. I know a lot was going on during like, you know, the COVID situation. So I haven't followed up or updated, um, recently. I'll get you, I'll probably put you in contact with the, with the president of, of Puerto Rico's delegation. Um, actually right, um, on Saturday, they're doing like the competition to select the team of masters because this year's on worlds are in Aruba. They're going to do that competition in Aruba like around November. And obviously cool. you're from here, you live over there, but you're as body class it gets. So 
it will be great. Like maybe not these years because calendar or something, but it will be great to see you like, you know, representing the, the flag all over again. Yeah, that would be awesome. That and this awesome. year I will say I was so disappointed that I couldn't do that they didn't have Puerto Rico as like a like as a country in the yeah, so yeah. when we were we were uh uh lining up for the opening ceremonies. So we had just done I think we had just done an event and then they just kind of rushed us over to, you know, the next spot. So everyone was all together and so I just kind of like start walking up the line because I'm like trying to see um the countries you know, and I, I was like, is there a Puerto Rico this year? You know, and they were like, no, because it was yeah. based off of citizenship rather than. Yeah. So one girl I asked, she's like, she's like, you know, um, she's like, I would just suggest emailing, you know, emailing CrossFit to see if, you know, they can do that again and again in the future, because I think it would be pretty awesome. But yeah, there was nothing this year, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, I think that the the very first year, I, I think that it was like maybe two years ago, just before the pandemic, that they switched it to the citizenship. Yeah, there was a movement here in Puerto Rico, because obviously, since we have we have the the U.S. citizenship, it's going to be really hard to see like a Puerto Rican like on yeah. on a regular individual, you know, Rx type of thing over there and obviously see the flag which is the most important part for me because we're going to always have people like you people like also on the adaptive and uh, maybe a teenager maybe another master like Sadia but like having you guys uh, work out with the with the US flag is just you know for me it hurts it hurts mm -hmm. so I'm definitely see like what we can do yeah on that regard and then put you in contact with the federation here to see if you can compete all over again yeah for right. us that would be yeah. great that'd be cool yeah yeah absolutely i have such a awesome time thank you for your time and yeah no problem really happy to see you again um the legends um competition is it going to be when so legends is in december december it's in december yeah Cool. So, um, yeah, coming off of this games this year, um, they, the qualifier is going on right now. Um, but, uh, I was able to get an invite because they invited the people who went to the game. So, yeah. um, thankfully I can take a little break. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> because to... going, coming off the games and then starting a, a whole new, it. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So, um, but yes, I, I did finally, um, I had to do that this week. <laughs> I finally accepted, um, the invitation. So yeah, so we're, uh, uh, planning to do, um, that in December. Perfect. Best of wishes. Best yeah, of luck. Thank you. Stay thank healthy. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. Yeah.